What's going on everybody? It's Rob here and today I'm going to be showing you how to put together the Millermatic cart for your welder. So just got this in earlier today. As you can see there's the cart on the box and this holds your Millermatic and also your shielding gas on the back end here. So it's kind of a convenient piece, you know, with my uh, workspace being pretty cluttered, I'd figured it would just be easier to get the cart and be able to move it around a little bit. Also, because I kind of want to be welding in the middle of my garage here, away from all the flammable car oils and mower and all that good stuff. So, add a little bit of convenience for me. And so, the only things you're going to need are a Phillips head screwdriver, a 7 16 ratchet or wrench, and a 3 quarter inch wrench. So let's get into it. So although the cart comes with instructions in here with all of the parts and everything, here's the actual instructions. I figured I'd just run through put it together and uh, answer any questions that anybody had in the comments, so let's get into it. So I'm going to start off by just opening it up and getting all of the pieces out of here. This is one of the shelves. I figured it'll just be easier to see all the numbers and stuff on the instructions with it all out in front of me. blue box is all the hardware that you're going to need to put it together. It's got the chain, chain to go around the shielding gas and all the nuts and bolts to uh, get it together. So continue unpacking it and uh, catch back up with you guys in a second. So as you can see over here laid out all of the parts except for this box which I'm about to unpack and it's really not too many moving pieces I assume in the box is the wheels and here you go so it's two four six eight about ten pieces plus what's ever in this box so although the diagram so the diagram looks a little hectic. The instructions is only about 12 steps with you know a couple steps in each one, so should come together pretty quick. And uh, let's get into it. All right, guys. So the first step in the building process is taking the two frame rails here, which are the bent square tubes that are longer on one side than the other. And we are going to put the axle through the side on the bottom which is longer than the top. The next step is going to be taking the bottom flat piece and screwing it into the frame rails. So I'm going to take that piece and the important thing to note here is the small holes go towards the back right over where the axle is. from the left 
So you're just going to need a Phillips head screwdriver there. You're going to screw these two into the frame rails. Alright guys, so I'm back here with the first step screwing, or second step screwing in the number 15 screws into the end here. And I couldn't quite get the screws to fit initially, so I ended up uh, kind of going back to the drawing board and uh, just drilling them out a little bit. So, not sure if it's just my set that's like this or if you'll have to do the same, but it saves a lot of frustration if you just uh, drill that out. Not too much, but just, just a little bit because mine are not screwing in at all. So just give them a little bit more room, little room there, and now they're going in like a charm. Now we're going to be doing step three, which is attaching the top tray to the frame rails. Alright guys, now that I've drilled out the top holes, just like the bottom holes, I'm going to line up this top tray with the little L's on the short end, not the rounded end of the frame rails. And we're going to go ahead and screw in the four corners to connect this upper shelf where the MIG welder will sit. Alright, now that that is complete, we'll move on to the next step, which is adding the caster wheels on the front of the front right here. So within the brown box there are these two caster wheels which will pop up and through the bottom frame rail. So there's one. There's the other, and those caster wheels on the sheet are number 12. And then you'll get two nuts from the first container to from the right on the hardware box. And you're going to get a three quarters ratchet or wrench and screw these on. So I'm using a ratchet just because it uh, will make things a little easier. Yeah, we'll see the next step here. So the next step is installing spacers or each end of the axles, which are in the second from the left bin, and then the side wheels, and then lightly tap the retaining rings, which are in that same bucket, second from the left. Looks like I only have one here, so that wouldn't be good. Oh, it is migrated to another one, so. Second from the left, there's two little retaining ones. And yeah, we'll get those side wheels on there as well. So first the wheel spacer, slide that on each side, then slide the wheel on. This one on. And then if you look on the end of the axle, zoom in here a little bit. 
There's a small indented circle. And we're going to use these kind of half half washers. Oh, you can't even see this at all. These half washers and kind of just push them right into there and that will keep the wheel from falling off. Not too bad. And I'm going to reset and get ready for the next one. Alright, so now that that step is completed, I'm going to remove these little things I had holding it up. And now you can see it is a functioning part. Not done yet, but it at least is together enough to function. So. There you go, pretty good so far, and now on to the next thing. All right, so the next step is to take the rear mounting bar and take the gas bracket and screw it into these three holes. And you're gonna wanna have this facing out and down. So just like with the top. I'm going to screw in each one of these just a little bit so it's snug and then I'm going to screw them all in all the way so the pressure is even through it. Alright, so now that you have the rear support all mounted up we are going to throw this on the back here, around the top, and have it sit kind of like this. So this is going to require 216 labeled bolts on the bottom, two in the middle, two washers on each of those, and two nuts as well. So it looks like in the diagram they put the bolt through this way. That's going to make tightening the nut on the other end pretty difficult. So I think I'm going to go the other way. And I think I'm going to start on the halfway point just so I can line up the bottom ones easy. As you can see, you have to reach under here. Can't even find the hole. And then when tightening the bolts on this, you're going to have to have a wrench on the inside and a wrench on the outside tightening. So that will be fun with one person if you're doing it with one person. Otherwise, if you have two people, it would be too much, of, too much of a hassle, but, you know, it is what it is. Now I'm going to get the 7 sixteenths wrench and ratchet and screw those all the way in. Alright guys, so the next step is to attach the consumable tray bracket, number 11, to the frame rails using two number 15 screws. So, I don't know if Miller is trying to troll me at this point or what, but this is supposed to go, these two little things go into these divots. and. Then this screws into the frame room. Now the 15 screws, let me get one. If you put it in these holes that are pre-drilled, you can stick it straight in with your finger and there's no screwing involved. If I wiggle this around, the screw will just pop, pop right out. So, 
either they mislabeled it and you need a 16 because that fits right through perfectly. And I guess we'll, we'll leave this off for now because the 16, 16 would fit through there. But a 15, that will uh, not work. So we're going to have to skip that step, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The eighth one down that uh, involves the 11 piece. Uh, and I guess once we get to the end, we'll see if they have, if we have any. If we have any 16 screws left, because this hole is just not even drilled for that. So we're going to have to skip number 8 and move on to the ninth step. Let me know in the comments if anybody else had this issue, but kind of frustrating. So the next step is to attach the cable hangers on the back gas bracket. So let me bring you guys over there. So it's attaching it onto the sides here. I don't know if you can see these two little dots there. And I will show you there, there's two little brackets, oh, three brackets I think in here. So four actually, and those are going to go on with uh, two 15 screws. There's going to be one on each side of this, one here and one over here. So, we just get that in there. And there you go, that's that step. And now you can see there's one on each side and those will hold your cables and yeah let's move on to the next step all right and the next step is to attach the push handle right here to the frame rail like so just going to take a quick look and yeah have the the bar pointed away from the chassis so obviously you're going to want to use it to push it under. So I'm going to line this up and then grab the bolts, which are the 16s. And the washer, which is 18, and the nut, which is 19. So it looks like here is where the... No, maybe not actually. Yep, now here is where the inner tray comes into play. Maybe it was an older model or something that had additional screw holes, but it looks like we're going to put the 16 through here. It's also going to attach the consumables, okay, consumables tray. So I'm going to first put in this line just to have it sitting there. And then I will have the consumable tray, which is 11, and I will throw that in there as well with the 16. So I'm going to throw this in. If we go through here, and then I'm going to throw a 16 through there, and it will hopefully thread all the way through. It looks like it will, and that, ooh, and that will hold 
both the handle here in place and the consumable tray. So, guess they may do there. And now throw the washers, number 18 on, and then the nuts. on right now and then I'll throw the nuts on. So just to reiterate this step is kind of combined with the step we skipped earlier, step number eight. Starting to really take form here and look like a cart compared to a couple minutes ago, so that's what you like to see. Alright, we'll move on to the next set, and uh, we're almost finished here. Alright, so the second to last step is throwing the wire brackets onto the push handle. And if that's going to be the same way you did it before. Alright guys, so since I don't have the welder all set up yet, and that's the next step, I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit. So the next step would have been to throw in the little mounting plate there, which locks in the welder, will, which will sit here. And so I'm going to do that in the next episode. And the last other step there is would be throwing the chain on these brackets here. So I will show you that. So the lower one is for a smaller bottle. You just want to slide this into the little circle and then down into the, the tray and you can adjust how you know tight it is with the amount of links on each. So it sits and you can have the bottle you know strapped in pretty good there. Or you can have it on the top if you have a full size bottle. And that is going to be it. I'll show you another angle here and take you off the tripod. So, this is how it sits. You'll have your bottle in here. Focus up. And yeah. So. That is the nearly fully set up Miller tray there. It's going to be super convenient since I don't know if I'll always be will always be welding in the garage, but I don't know if I always want the welder in here. It gets kind of uh, wet in here sometimes, so I'm probably going to keep it in the basement when I'm not using it, but it's going to make it super easy to move around and yeah so if you guys like the video and want to check out more welding content in the future and me putting together the Millermatic 211 definitely drop a subscribe and uh, we will see you soon in the next video I've got a lot of a lot of big stuff coming up so definitely stay tuned Alright, we'll catch you in the next video, and thanks for watching.